you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Ruckus Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the version 5.2 release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I'll provide an example of how to configure zero touch settings for switches that are added to a Smart Zone switch group. This allows a baseline configuration to be applied to switches as they are onboarded onto the controller. So let's get started. As you can see, I'm already logged into a high scale instance of the virtual smart zone controller. You can also see that this instance is running version 5.2.0.0.699, or simply referred to as 5.2. In this release, you can define group level configurations that are applied to any switch running 8.0.90a or later without an existing configuration. There are settings that are applied to all switch models when they join, as well as model specific settings that are applied based on switch type, for example, only for 7150-24 switches. First, let's look at my switch configuration. I booted an ICX 7150 to factory defaults. First, I'll run the show version command to show that it's running version 8.0.92 router code. Now I'll display the running config. As you can see, the only changes I've made is to define the IP address of the Smart Zone controller and to assign an IP address to the management interface. So this switch is now sitting in the staging group on the controller. Lastly, and this is important, I can change these configuration settings on the switch, but if I want to receive the zero touch group configuration, I cannot have the configuration saved. Running the show config command verifies that both config areas are empty. Okay, back to the smart zone. Switch configurations are made by selecting the switches tab on the left side pane of the smart zone dashboard window. Then you navigate to a switch group and select the configuration tab below. The common configuration section contains settings that will be applied to all switches. This includes DNS and AAA settings. You click create to configure common configuration settings for the switch group. In the DNS tab, you can add DNS servers by typing in the IP address and clicking the Add button. Added DNS servers can also be deleted by clicking on them and clicking the Delete button. The AAA tab has several options. The first is defining the servers. Click the Create button to begin defining servers. All AAA servers require a name. The other options change based on the selected type. I can configure Radius, TACAX Plus, or a local user account. I'll quickly configure a radius server and click OK to save it. Then I'll create another, but this time I'll select a local user. I'll define the settings, then click OK again to save that one. Now that I've configured the servers, I can configure the login authentication, authorization, and accounting settings as needed. If I toggle the SSH or Telnet authentication to on, I can select from configured servers and order them by preference. Authorization and accounting are very similar. I can enable command and exec availability of each by toggling the respective switch to on, selecting the level where applicable, and the preferred servers. Then click OK to save any changes. In the model configuration, I can configure model specific settings. For example, only for 7150C12 switches like mine. To do this, select the model type, then click configure. The first tab is ACL. I can configure an ACL by clicking Create. Each ACL gets a name, then select Standard or Extended. Depending on the selection, the configurable fields will change. I'm going to go with Standard. In the Rules section, click Create to define the individual rules for the ACL. Here we'll add a rule for 10.0.0.0/8. Notice the pre-configured rule with a sequence number of 65,000, which permits all traffic. Depending on the purpose of your ACL, you may want to delete this rule as it may allow anything not matched by the rules you have configured. Then you can apply the ACL configuration now or later. This option has relevance when you are modifying these settings when there are already switches in the switch group. In this example, we are only dealing with onboarding, so we will choose now. Then click OK to save the changes. The next tab is VLAN. I can configure a VLAN by clicking Create. Each VLAN must be assigned an ID and optionally get a name. You can enable IPv4 DHCP snooping and ARP inspection if desired, but if enabled, each requires the defining of trusted ports. 
IGMP snooping can be enabled with the option to specify which IGMP version to use. Spanning tree can be enabled with the choice of 802.1 DSTP or 802.1 W rapid spanning tree. You can optionally define the device's STP bridge priority as well. The ports section allows even more specific changes based on exact models of switches. Click create to assign ports of a specific switch model to a VLAN. Based on the model selected, under Model Configuration, a drop-down list of specific models is available. First I'll select 7150-C12, then I'll set up two ports as untagged, and two other ports as tagged. Click OK to save the VLAN configuration, and you can repeat this process for any additional VLANs. The last tab is Static Route. Here I can configure a static route by clicking Create. Simply enter the destination IP subnet, the next tap router, and an optional administrative distance, then click OK. We can now click Close to complete our model configuration for the ICX7150 switches. Now let's move this switch from the staging group to the group I just configured. After confirming and waiting a few moments for the switch to be updated, let's take a look at the changes to the switch's actual configuration. First we can see that the switch has fully established a connection to the controller. Now let's look at the running configuration and see what we can see. You can see VLAN 100 was created with all of the settings that I defined. You can see all of the AAA authentication, authorization, and accounting settings. You can see the DNS servers were configured. You can see the static route was applied. You can see the local user account was created as well as the RADIUS server configuration. And finally, you can see the ACL that was created. Those were all the configuration settings we applied to the switch group. Now, whenever a switch is placed into this group, it will be supplied with some baseline configurations. This concludes the demonstration on configuring zero-touch settings for switches that are added to a switch group on a smart zone high-scale controller running release 5.2. Thanks for taking the time to view this demonstration. Thank you.